Hello and welcome to another video. This video I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different to what I normally would post. It involves the Huawei Mate 30 Pro on this occasion and my telescope. Now if you follow me on any of my social media channels you'll see uh, on Twitter, on uh, Instagram, I'll leave links to those down below, you can check those out. I've got some photographs of the Moon, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, things like that. Astronomical objects, um, something that smartphones aren't really designed to uh, take photographs of. And that's one of the things I like about the Huawei phones, is the camera app on it is really good. Um, really easy to adjust ISO settings, all that sort of thing. Now at this time of year, We've only got the Moon and Venus up at the moment. This is April 2020, depending on when you're watching the video. But later on in the year, I'm probably going to do a follow-up video with the likes of Saturn, Jupiter, that sort of thing, and see if we can get Mars as well. So I'm going to run you through my uh, telescope in a moment. So obviously the Mate 30 Pro, for purposes of what I'm going to be using it for, I'm just using the primary sensor for this. Uh, I won't be using wide angle or anything like that it's because I'm not going to need to zoom in with the actual phone. It'll be all done with the telescope eyepieces. So I'll show you those in a bit and show you which one, a couple of my favourites. So let's go through the telescope quickly. So this is a particular telescope I've got. I've had it for some years now. Um, there's no motorised mounts, there's no go to settings or anything so this is all manually adjusted there's no basically no technology on it really um, it's a sky watcher skyliner 250p so it's quite a large telescope um, and it serves me really well actually for finding the uh, the objects in the night sky it's brilliant for it it's also quite cheap it's one of the cheapest large telescopes you can get on the market really and it's a it's quite a good one as well um, it's a Dobso, it's what we call a Dobsonian telescope for those that don't know and uh, it basically as you I'll demonstrate you have to manually adjust it move it round uh, your eyepiece is going here You've got your little finder scope up the top here and basically uh, when you pop your eyepieces they go in there and I'll show you the uh, adapter that I use for the smartphone. As you can see it's just a big hollow tube with a, with a mirror right down the bottom and a mirror right at the top basically. It's a big light bucket, light comes in here, goes down to the bottom it's reflected back up to a small mirror here and that's at an angle to pass the light straight through to this uh, point here where the eyepiece is going. So first of all we've got the eye, the finder scope, we line that up, you've got some crosshairs in there which you can't quite see on this occasion. Next I'm going to put in what we call a Barlow uh, lens, it will double the magnification power of the eyepiece, uh, it's an all metal construction uh, it's all hollow at the top so you can put your eyepiece in the top there and uh, some lenses going at the bottom. You can actually fit filters in these. Uh, the lens I'm using for this is this particular one. Um, it's what we call a long eye, eye relief I think they call it. Um, six and a half, 6.5, 76 degree one. Um, they're not the most expensive lenses, but again, all metal construction, excellent really, I love them. Uh, obviously the phone, we're going to next uh, put that into the actual uh, adapter mount to actually fix the, to the telescope. The one I'm using is just Orion Steady Picks. Um, it's just a plastic construction where it's not very expensive, making sure to keep the power button or any volume buttons away from the actual clamp, otherwise you will get problems with it. I find you don't want to over tighten these, just making sure they're tight enough. Uh, actually lining up the lens, really straightforward and easy, and 
as you can see, all nice and steady. So all, whole, all lines up nicely. It's all spot on, ready to go onto the actual telescope. The way you do it, it's got some, three little paddles inside that clamp on the end of the eyepiece. This tightens it up. I find you don't want to over tighten this, being plastic construction, it's not the best. But it does seem to hold on fairly steadily, making sure it's tightened up, nice and steady. It shouldn't fall off. I haven't had it fall off yet, but uh, the actual setup, it looks quite long, but in order to be able to get the magnification you need, need a good amount of kit. So it's actually quite heavy on the uh, telescope. So I've got to make sure that the telescope's well balanced for it. So as you can see with the planet Venus, we're going to start with, it's really bright in the sky. So it's just a matter of adjusting the ISO initially to start with. I usually set it on about 50 uh, on this particular phone. And it's just play about with it. Shutter speed, I find it depends on the viewing conditions, but shutter speed, you can, you can play about with that and you get just the right shot. Video, same sort of thing really. Um, adjust the ISO. And really for me, I find just adjusting the ISO a little bit, it, that's all I really need to do, to be honest with you. It seems to work all right. So one of the other things you're definitely going to need is some sort of trigger for your camera. Now you can, uh, you can set your camera up so it takes a photograph with, uh, with a voice prompt. I find sometimes, depending on the phone itself, it can be a bit finicky. And with a telescope like this, especially at magnifications, if you don't get it spot on first time, you miss that chance. You've got to set it up again. Um, so what I use is a Bluetooth trigger. Now for this one, I've got one of these Blitzwolf uh, selfie stick things, extendable selfie stick. Um, but one thing it's got is a Bluetooth trigger, if I can, which comes off. Pair up your Bluetooth, pair up your phone's Bluetooth. That way you can set it up, leave the telescope alone, don't touch it. It stops wobbling, you press the button and it takes a photograph. But I mean, there's loads of different types of Bluetooth triggers you can get. So this just happens to be one that I have lying around, which I use. And the other reason why I like it, it's so small, I can stick it in my pocket. This one I find works really well. Right, in these images, all I've done is just compiled a little thing, just how it all goes. As you can see, with uh, a lot of these smartphones, you can zoom in a little bit, but if you zoom in too far, obviously it swaps to the other camera. So uh, it's best to stick, to, obviously you have to stick to the one camera, but as you can see, every touch on the screen uh, makes, it, makes it wobble a bit. So, you know, these uh, images come out really good. Uh, it's fairly clear that night. And these are unedited images. So this is straight from the phone. And I think they come out, once they've edited, you can sharpen them up. They come out really nicely then. A few shots of the moon. Um, as you can see, I can get in really close. I can actually get in close with a different lens, but the, the camera on the phone doesn't, uh, it, it takes a bit of work to try and get that to actually work. But as you can see, you can get some good close-ups with the actual moon. And so you can see quite a lot of detail actually. Uh, we've got some images coming up of the actual night. Um, I'll just start off maybe with a couple, uh, unedited again, um, and they come out really nicely. And I've got a couple I'll stick in at right at the end here. I have edited these on Lightroom and the detail that comes out, sorry, not Lightroom, I've actually edited them on the phone. Right, so the actual editing software on this phone is actually quite good. Um, and they, I don't have anything special on this one. You can get some more specialized apps um, and the camera's already pretty good to be honest with you. You go into the pro settings and you can fiddle about as much as you want with these Huawei phones. 
previous phone I was using was the uh, P30 Pro. Excellent cameras, really are. But one thing I didn't mention on the actual uh, before when I was setting it up, take the case off of it. It doesn't matter how rigid it is, there's still always a bit of flex in the case if you're gonna use something like this. You want it to be a nice, steady, firm grip. Let's be honest, it's not a cheap phone. It's quite expensive. Uh, if you don't have this one, if you've got another smartphone, iPhone, something like that, they're really quite expensive. So you don't want it dropping, especially on a hard surface. So that's the video. Um, this is basic for the people, uh, some people that wanted to know how to go about it and they're just generally interested. So I thought, ah, why not do a video? I'll do another video later on in the year when you've got Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, that sort of thing up in the air, up, up in the air, up in the sky. Um, at the moment, they're early in the morning around where I live. I can't see them too well. The sun comes up before I can actually get a telescope onto them. So a little bit later on in the year, they'll be higher up in the sky, night sky, that sort of thing. So hopefully get some good views then. Um, the telescope, if you've got any questions about it, I'm not a massive astronomy technical person. So if you've got any questions, I could probably provide a couple of links um, if you've got any specific questions or whatever. Uh, if you're thinking about getting one, you don't have to get something this size. Um, I only got it because I just, at the time it was quite a good deal. So I thought, mm, I might as well get that one. The, uh, this size of telescope tends to be really quite heavy uh, to try and move around. So if you want something a bit more portable, particularly if you've got to keep it in a, another room in the house upstairs, this sort of thing's quite a bolt to keep moving around. You can take them apart, but even so, uh, you can get the smaller versions of these Skywatcher Skyliners, excellent prices, you can still get great views, e work equally as well. Obviously the bigger the telescope, the more light you're getting, the more information you're getting out of the light sky, but I mean for what I'm doing, that's perfectly fine. If you want to get more into astrophotography, you obviously want something that's got a go-to mount, that's motorised, equatorial mount telescope that's on a tripod that sort of thing as i say if you've got any specific questions i can put links to where you can get information in the comments but there's also a couple of websites that you can go on i'll probably put a link down to one specific one which he has a mine of information on there so that's it for this video as i say if i didn't say before please like share and subscribe if you want more of these videos let me know um if you're going to get Cheap telescope, get some decent lenses. But like I say, if you have a chat with a decent astronomy center, they can give you loads of advice on that. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again soon.